Uh, my name is Abel. I work for NXP. I do um, kernel Linux bring up for IMX family, uh, SOC family. Uh, I'm also the upstream maintainer for clocks in the kernel. Uh, I'm currently spending time on um, everything that involves boot, boot up process, uh, CPU idle, CPU frag, pin control, and the other stuff. Uh, yeah, today I'm going to talk about um, a problem that we have on IMX currently with how the buses are supposed to be, uh, bus clocks are supposed to be controlled. Uh, unfortunately, uh, I'm not supposed to talk about what we have internally. We have a solution on our own, which I think dates back to 2014. It's not upstreamable, and uh, that's when me and another colleague of mine, which currently doesn't work for NXP anymore, uh, came up with the idea of um, using something that's already upstream, interconnect and devfrec, for controlling the bus clocks. Uh, one second. So, what's this about? Um, I'm going to explain a little bit about what the, a bus is, and then uh, uh, how, what exactly the bus frequency scaling is, and then what the sub what the kernel subsystems from upstream we can use, including uh, DevFrec and interconnect, how they all fit together, and some implementation for uh, the drivers that are involved, and uh, uh, then CFS interfaces for debugging, and a little bit about upstreaming status. Unfortunately, there's a lot of code involved, so there are like a couple of slides that have a lot of code on them, but I'm trying to like explain what they do, so yeah. Uh, okay, what's a bus? This is a uh, uh, block diagram of uh, one of the SOCs, IMX SOCs from NXP, and uh, we have here a lot of, uh, let's say, IP blocks. For example, we have the Cortex ARM A A53 up there, then we have M M4, then we have the internal memory, OCRAM and stuff like that, DDR controller, um, uh, G uh, graphics, GPU stuff, and AP peripheral. Now, all of these have to be interconnected somehow, and that's where the AXI, for example, in this case, and AHP, which are types of buses, uh, come into play. Uh, unfortunately, I'm not able to show you the uh, system bus diagram that we have uh, because that seems to not be publicly available. Uh, yeah, it seems that the semiconductor companies have a way of keeping stuff to themselves. <laughs> yeah, uh, but it's rather complicated. So <laughs> if you really want to understand what, like, what a bus is composed of, you can have a look at the DTSI or DTS files, d device tree files, because you will see the clocks that are involved. And uh, yeah, you can figure out like every single node along the buses from there. Um, okay, this is, a, so since I don't have that, I had to come up with something. This is from the interconnect uh, documentation from the kernel. And uh, it kind of shows up like, um, uh, let's say, hypothetical SOC, right? And we have like uh, CPUs over here, GPU stuff, DDR over there, and uh, a lot of NOCs. I think there are five of them. Memory NOC, S NOC, C NOC, M NOC, and P NOC. Now, what's a NOC? Network on chip. That's the uh, uh, long naming. Uh, it basically. Uh, behaves like a, an intersection for all the bu all the buses that need to go ar around the SOC. So, for example, we have buses that go from the CPU to the DDR, but also it can go from the CPUs to I don't know uh, DSP or something like that or PCIe. And uh, in order to interconnect the buses, we we need this um, let's say smart switch fabrics. Now, what they do internally that's a subject for another talk, 
it's rather complicated. I don't know much about them. Uh, I know that there are like some of them come from ARM, uh, and some of them I think the most let's say advanced ones are from Arteris, and that those are the ones that uh, IMX SSDs are using. Uh, basically, they just take care of uh, switching from one bus to another and sending the data along the data paths. Um, yeah. So if we were to take one case here, let's say the, the GPU needs to do something like rendering and needs the DDR rate and the bus to the DDR to be at, at let's say, highest rate possible. I don't know. Uh, uh, for that, we would need to set up the clocks for the, D the clock for the DDR clocks, because sometimes, like there are more of them, and then for every other knock involved. Assuming so, let's say that this would be the clock slices that come from the co clock controller to each of the knocks, and you can gate them, you can set parents to them, you can set rates, and uh, in order to like achieve the best, let's say, power consumption, you would have to keep those clocks as uh, lower as possible, maybe even gated. But obviously, to be able to do stuff like rendering, you need to have the clocks enabled and maybe running at, the fu at full speed. So, uh, yeah, we need to control those clocks somehow. That's basically the point. And, uh, Basically, the GPU driver would need a way to control all the clocks involved, in this case, uh, the memory uh, knock clock and the DDR. I haven't added the clock there because it's not part of the, of the bus. It's basically a target in this case. So uh, th this is basically what the bus frequency scaling is all about, controlling the clocks for the knocks or NICs, I think is the other term network interconnect uh, for a specific consumer, in this case the GPU, towards a target, the DDR, or it can be, we don't have here one, but it can be OCRAM and other stuff. Uh, so what do we need software-wise? Uh, we need a way to map all the data paths, the example that I gave earlier, from the GPU to the uh, DDR, and uh, a way to address them, like having uh, a way to say, okay, this is the path that I need as a driver for the GPU. And then we also need a way to set, <laughs> let's say, configure the minimum frequency uh, that the consumer needs for the DDR. Uh, and that is it, basically. This is like, uh, let's say, looking at, at, at the software solution from a high level. Okay, and uh, obviously we're trying to use as many uh, subsystems that are upstream rather than adding our own. Uh, and uh, we have like common clock framework for controlling the clocks, uh, OPP for uh, uh, actually specifying the rates that a specific d device should be running at, like a table, let's say. And then we have the PMQOS, which uh, is used for determining, uh, well, actually, it's used for uh, saying, uh, assuring, basically, the minimum frequency that we want for that device. And then we have the DevFrag, which allows you to control the uh, a specific clock for a device. Basically, it's like a replacement for uh, CPU freak, but for the devices. And uh, the interconnect, which basically allows us to map all the, the paths and uh, nodes and stuff like that. Uh, OK, this, so basically, Common Clock Framework registers all the clocks through the clock provider platform driver. Uh, you have the ways, APIs provided by the framework to uh, gate and gate stuff. So basically, if you ever written a driver that handles something hardware related, um, you probably used clock rate, clock set rate, or clock get, or clock set parent, stuff like that. Um, those are part of the common clock framework. Also has um, device tree properties 
for um, assigning parents, assigning clocks to devices in the device uh, nodes and stuff like that. Uh, OPP, as I said, provides a way to specify a number of frequencies for the uh, devices and uh, also provides device tree properties, again, for uh, like describing a table of OPPs for uh, a specific device. And we're going to see that later on. Uh, PMQoS, basically, you can request, you can say something like, I need this frequency for this specific device, and then uh, PMQoS basically uh, takes care of that expectation somehow. Uh, I'm not going to go into the details. Every single um, uh, subsystem is actually a subject for an entirely different presentation, and it's quite big to go through, but I'm trying to stick to what exactly we need to get our solution going. Uh, so we would only take care of frequency. We don't care about throughput and stuff like that, timeout, latency. Yeah, DevFrec uh, provides DVFS for non-CPU devices, as I said earlier. It also has governors and policies like CPU Idle does. Um, in our solution, we're using uh, PowerSafe because we're trying to uh, always stick with the lowest uh, rate possible. So, yeah. Um, this is like, okay, I took this from a presentation from uh, a DevFrec, I think it was a couple of years ago. This explains how uh, the DevFrec design is um, implemented. So we have the governors with uh, uh, like different types. User space actually allows you to set up the rate through the CFS for the, a specific device. You're registering a device and then uh, the governor takes care of Right. Uh, then we have, uh, for example, interaction or relationships with other subsystems. Like in our case, we're interested in PMQS, OPP, and interconnect. So uh, this is basically what we're trying to do. Interconnect would request a PMQS that adjusts basically the uh, final frequency through dev uh, devfrec for a specific device. And uh, to show you exactly. Okay, let's go through, sorry, let's go through Interconnect first and then I'm gonna uh, show how exactly they all fit together. Um, Interconnect basically allows you to uh, add all that information about uh, data paths. So for example, you can have multiple data paths that cross through the same NOC or uh, you can have uh, data paths that, uh, uh, you can have the same data, pa data path used by different drivers. Everything is provided basically in kernel by the interconnect subsystem. Um, you can uh, attach interconnect paths to, uh, through the, to the devices. You can, um, uh, yeah, it's, it's like provides everything you need to be able to work with, with uh, uh, buses, basically. Uh, it also works. It's designed as a uh, co consumer provider, so basically you're re registering the provider driver for that specific platform, which adds all the nodes, and then uh, the consumer only uses one path, and uh, then interconnect generic stuff takes care of the rest. Uh, yeah, this is all. So. This is how they all fit together. Basically, we have, let's take another example, uh, Ethernet, right? The Ethernet controller uh, would use an interconnect path, which internally has like two nodes, two endpoints, the one that it's trying to get from, and the, 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 the target one. In our case, uh, it has a, an ID for the Ethernet and then an ID for the DDR. and. Uh, uh, that gets figured out by the interconnect subsystem. Uh, when it reaches, a, 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 let's say, a node within that path, it calls PMQoS for that uh, specific node. So for example, each uh, NOC will be registered as a DevFrag device. We have uh, a driver that registers each NOC as a DevFrag device, 
and uh, through the PMQoS requests a specific OPP from the available ones and stuff like that, and then goes down to the to the uh, let's say CCF and controls basically the clock registers. So yeah, this like everything. Oh, we have another case which um, I forgot to add here, where for example the DDRC, it's also a DevFrag device. It's also uh, used by the interconnect in our solution through P PMQS, but it's not going through CCF, it's going to SMCCC because uh, we want to do the clock changes in ATF for some reason. It, yeah, there is some magic involved there. I can't, like, for example, you're not supposed to control the DDR clocks from kernel. You're supposed to do that from, uh, I think, secure environment or something, ATF. Uh, so what what drivers are involved? What do we need? We need a clock provider which registers all the clocks. Uh, we need a DevFrag device for all the nodes and the targets. So for example, DDRC, DDR controller driver, that's a DevFrag uh, uh, driver. Then for NOCs to control basically the clocks, another DevFrag device, uh, uh, DevFrag driver, sorry. And then we need a uh, interconnect provider, which registers all the nodes for the entire, let's say, net of uh, NOCs and stuff like that. And we also have, we need basically a consumer, somebody who requests a rate for the target and uh, along the path to be uh, configure a specific rate. So yeah, in our case, that would be either uh, Ethernet or, I don't know, GPU, for example, and stuff like that. So every single uh, IP, basically, that uses the bus eventually would end up being an interconnect consumer and would have to add in the interconnect API for that. So yeah, uh, this is like, I had to strip down the, uh, clock driver to show exactly how we register that. So basically we're registering the VPU bus, which is used by the VPU NOC. Um, you're registering it, you have, a, uh, so this is the IMX way of doing things. I, I'm assuming most of the other, most of other uh, providers or vendors are doing this maybe in a different way, but eventually you have an ID which uses uh, uh, one cell basically uh, translate function to uh, get uh, the clock from the device tree. So basically you're saying this is the uh, handle to the provider and then you're saying this is the ID of the clock that I want. And I'm gonna show that later on. Uh, and we're adding the provider with all the clocks. There are some, so this is a stripped down clock driver, only this clock, but there are like, I don't know, hundreds of clocks, so yeah. Uh, then different drivers. Sorry for the <laughs> yeah massive code here, but um, so basically this registers um, uh, for each knock and target. Basically, this is uh, IMX bus is just for the knocks, but we have another one for the D uh, DDRC for uh, uh, DDR controller. Uh, this is uh, already upstream, I think. It needs some kind of modifi modifications to be able to work without the dev frag being linked together, but I'm going to talk about that later on. Uh, so basically, we're registering a profile for dev frag, which takes, along, among other things, it takes the uh, bus target, uh, which basically takes from the dev frag the recommended op and sets the rate through PM OPP, which is uh, basically calling into uh, the common clock framework for that specific device. Uh, uh, and we're adding basically uh, the device to the DevFrec subsystem. And then here we have uh, an example of uh, the NOC uh, uh, device tree node. So you, you have the comparable, you have the clock, as I mentioned earlier. For example, this one is using main axi. Uh, and uh, you also have uh, the mandatory interconnect cells because it's part of the uh, interconnect and uh, it's a device that gets changed by the interconnect and y you need that. And uh, some um, 
let's say an XP specific in this case Frisk specific uh, ID which maps this one to the specific ID from the interconnect uh, prov uh, provider and uh, also the OPP table uh, this can be can configured in like you can have your own rates but um, most of the times you have like the ones that are used by the consumers uh, and uh, you have them specified in the, I think, ADD, uh, architecture, design, whatever, the document that is not public, unfortunately. Um, yeah, this is, so next we're moving on to the interconnect provider driver. I had to like add some of the uh, uh, IMX generic part, you know, helpers to uh, allow us to have uh, uh, the platform specific stuff as uh, minimal as possible. So basically, we're just adding the nodes, but I'm going to show that later on. So basically, we have uh, we specify uh, a node. Which it, it might be master or slave. Uh, it might be just an interconnect. And then you're passing on all the links to uh, the next node or stuff like that. And this is a way to map all the uh, uh, the net of uh, NOCs. And then we have uh, ICC register, which is being called from uh, the platform specific part to register all the nodes with the node number and stuff like that. Uh, and up there, we have the description basically of a node. So you have a name, you have a un unique ID, which is used in the device tree to identify a specific node. And then you have links to other nodes and the number of links for a specific node. Uh, and this is the uh, SOC specific part. So basically, we're adding uh, uh, nodes. Basically, the first one is uh, uh, the main NOC, basically, and it uh, has links to uh, DRAM and main. The second argument is basically the ID of the, the uh, node. Uh, DRAM is basically a slave of the uh, interconnect, but we're only adding the ID of it, basically, and so on. Uh, and then we we have the probe function, which gets called only for when the compatible matches for uh, this specific SOC. And this is it for the interconnect uh, provider core specific, SOC specific. So uh, now we need to look at uh, uh, IMX. Uh, generic part. Basically, we're adding the provider, we're adding all the nodes, uh, and we're registering each node. And this is where the things get complicated. So you need a way to uh, actually link the, the interconnect, which has its own device tree node, uh, to each NOC or uh, NIC, basically. And that's it has been done differently until now. I'm trying to change that. It was using, it was registering a single interconnect for all the nodes, basically. Now, this one probes once, but you need to somehow link the ID of the interconnect node to a specific NOC. And uh, before, let's say, before the changes I made, which are not upstream yet, uh, it was only supporting one NOC, but we have different SOCs that are using like 15 of them, of them so we need to support that somehow. Uh, yeah, and this one basically in initializes the uh, PMQoS. Now, that's the, the ugly part right there. I don't have a solution for that yet. So we're looking through the whole device tree, and if a specific device node has that uh, uh, property, then we're saying, okay, this is the device that we want to add the PMQoS request to. And uh, the expectation is for minimum frequency, basically. Yeah, I need to rework that somehow. I don't have a way yet of doing that, but yeah. Uh, and this is the set function. This gets called every single time there is a change for a specific node along the path. And it updates, forget about uh, error checking and stuff. I had to trim it down to the basics. So this one uh, updates the request that was 
added uh, uh, when the the node was registered, basically. Uh, and we're we are using the so basically interconnect gives you uh, peak and average bandwidths, but I'm only using using peak here because I don't need the other one. So, uh, yeah. Okay, so this is the consumer device you know. In this case, the Ethernet. Uh, we need three properties for this to work. Uh, first, interconnects, which specifies the path, basically, from the Ethernet to the uh, DDR. And then we have uh, to name it, because the interconnect uh, API asks you to get it by name, basically, by default. I don't know why. And then we also have uh, something specific for NXP, which is uh, this is the rate I need the bus to be set at. But for example, you might have knocks that are not running at 800. So it's always trying to get the highest rate. If you have a knock that runs at 400 uh, megahertz, then you're setting that and you should be fine. Um, yeah, it's not that pretty, but for now we do not have anything else. I'm trying to get that worked out, but yeah. And this is the consumer driver uh, of, uh, so the Ethernet probe function. Uh, among other things, it's basic getting the path, the ICC path, interconnect path, and gets the rate, uh, and at the end it sets the rate to whatever was requested by, whatever was specified in the device tree. Uh, so this is this is something that should be done before anything else, basically, because you need to uh, make sure that you have you have the highest rate. Otherwise, it, some of the clocks might be disabled or gated, basically, and uh, you don't want that. the The driver won't uh, probe successfully if you reading or writing stuff. So, yeah, uh, and that only takes part of takes care of the, let's say, the initialization. So, but at some point, you need somehow to tell the interconnect that you don't need that path anymore. And that's where the uh, suspend runtime suspend and runtime uh, resume come into play. So basically, when you're doing suspend, right at the bottom, you're doing ICC disable for the path that was initialized for the Ethernet driver. and B this basically goes through each node of the interconnect and sets the minimum rate. So if there is no other path that's crossing that node, it basically disable the disables the clock. Uh, for each node, even for the target, uh, if the clock can be gated, for example, the DDR has a clock that's critical. You cannot uh, gate that. So yeah. And uh, for the runtime, the first thing you need to do is actually get uh, the frequency up again before doing anything else. So it's doing ICC enable for that path, which uh, reestablishes the highest rate we requested in the uh, probe function, where we said where we said ICC set bandwidth at this specific rate. Okay, um, yeah. In order to debug this stuff, you need a few things. So you need to have a look at clock summary, or basically at a rate of a specific uh, knock. If it doesn't, for example, if the probe, fun if the Ethernet uh, driver doesn't work successfully, then maybe one of the clocks is not. Uh, enabled or it's not uh, at the highest rate you want. So this is a place to look for the, yeah, I think this is quite popular anyway. Then next we have the DEFRIC CCFS uh, stats. This actually shows you a table of how many switches were between the, the, uh, the frequencies and uh, how much time it, it, spend, it spent uh, actually in a, a specific uh, state. So, uh, for example, the first one is for the memory controller, and we only have those, yeah, those specific, those two uh, frequencies. 
the first one is a little bit ugly because of something messed up in uh, the PLL and it doesn't give you the right rate, so that's what it's running on. It's actually not that right in hardware, but when you're, uh, so uh, anyone who n works with clocks knows that you don't have a way to measure them at runtime unless you're like uh, populating the board w and measuring the clock. So you don't really have um, the accurate rate, and that's what happens there, basically. It gets divided by something that, yeah, but that's not the actual. I think it's uh, 170 megahertz or something like that. I'm not sure, so, yeah. Um, also, every single uh, knock or PL301, which is from ARM, has its own table with the uh, uh uh, statistics for uh, each state and so on. Okay, this is the interconnect CCFS dots. Uh, this basically gives you. Uh, okay, I'm again. I'm not using the average bandwidth. I'm only using the peak bandwidth here. Uh, this is not from the. Uh, uh, this example is not actually taken from our. Uh, uh, IMX SOC because I didn't have that running at the time I wrote this, so I had to use something else. But I think this is from Qualcomm or something. Uh, it's using uh, it. It shows up basically every single interconnect and subgraphs of that basically. And uh, at the bottom we have the summary, which kind of looks like the clocks. And then you have the user. For example, this one is a, a consumer here. And this is uh, a, a, a knock, and then you have uh, average, the current average and the current peak, and the tag, which we're not using. It's oh. something that Interconnect provides, but I'm, we don't need that, and I'm, I'm not going to explain that right now. Uh, OK, so upstream status. We already have the IMX bus driver and the IMX 8M DDRC for the uh, uh, DRAM upstream, but it needs some rework. Um, unfortunately, the interconnect registers the s registers the device of the IMX bus, and you can only have one. That's one of the problems, which we're trying to solve, decoupling them and uh, probe make the IMX bus probe for each node that is uh, a knock described in the uh, device stream. Uh, and uh, the interconnect generic and ATEM Q at this point are upstream, but uh, it needs some rework. So there are like stuff that, at this point, if you're trying to use them, uh, I don't think you're going to be able to. So yeah, that sucks. Uh, uh, and then. What needs to be upstreamed are device tree nodes for the NOx. Now, if somebody from outside NXP is trying to do this, they will not have access to the system bus diagram. They can do it based on uh, the clocks that are used by the consumer in the device tree. So for example, the, the Ethernet driver before the interconnect, and I think in upstream that's how it still is, it enables all the clocks along the path. Now that's obviously a problem because if you have multiple devices that are using the same clocks, without the interconnect, you will mess up the clocks f one for the other and stuff like that. So, uh, yeah, <laughs> you can figure out the clocks from there. Clocks for the the, and I think the naming of the clocks are also a pointer to which. Uh, NOC the clock belongs to. So, yeah, I think it, it can be done without the system bus diagram, but I think it's harder. And, uh, yeah, as a note, I'm leaving NXP <laughs> in the next <laughs> month, so I'm presenting this and maybe it's going to die out. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> yeah, I spent some time on this. Uh, okay, one of the... so. You would probably expect me to show you some of the numbers, like what would be the power consumption benefit of this. 
I do not have that because, um, well, I need the board populated with all the rails to be able to measure uh, the, the clocks, but, and sorry, the power consumption, but um, I don't have that. Uh, there is a team, uh, NXP team, I think it's in China, who promised that they would be doing that, but yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's not <laughs> going anywhere as of yet. So again, this might be dying out soon. I don't know. I'm not. So since I'm leaving, I'm not going to be a, having access for the uh, the boards that are, are supposed to be using interconnect. So I'm not. Yeah, I'm not going to be able to work on this anymore. So yeah, this is it. I think this was a. Oh, right on time. Questions, <laughs> suggestions. <laughs> I thought that, yeah. Okay, funny fact. I'm not supposed to be talking about that. Um, it's not upstreamable. That's a solution that's going on f for like eight years, I think. Uh, it's never going to be upstream. They tried to. It's a, So basically, for everyone else, it has um, two APIs that are used throughout the entire tree. Request bus freak and release bus freak. And... Uh, uh, basically, you're, you're doing this. You're, you're requesting the highest rate. You only have like three, uh, uh, let's say, three frequencies that you can ask for. High, low, and audio. Audio is used for the audio devices and stuff like that. And internally, it takes care of everything else. So everything is hidden under the hood. But uh, the problem with that is... Uh, if you're requesting high, it enables, it sets the highest rate for all the knocks around, uh, within the system, which obviously shouldn't be the case, right? You want to only enable the knocks that are along your path to the target and leave the other ones al alone. But that was, so, yeah, they needed a fast solution, they used that. Uh, it's still deployed with the three that we have. This was supposed to replace that, but yeah, I don't make those decisions. <laughs> so yeah, uh, yeah, it is what it is. Any other question? Well, it seems like a general thing that every, <coughs> every sort would be. <coughs> I think Qualcomm is using this. Samsung is using this. But even for Latinox? Yeah, but they have like they have a different way of handling that. So, so, so they're registering the knocks in a different way. I would say. Okay. Yeah. That's why we had the FSL properties because um, there is no way to link the, the, the interconnect node with the uh, the knock that you want. Other, okay. other than using the or at least I don't have a solution for that yet. Yeah. But it just it, it sounds like it should be a generic problem and, and it should be fixed because then other can benefit as well for the Yeah, but I mean Samsung is doing this for quite some time. Qualcomm is doing this. Yeah, but so the, but do they also have this thing that when they, they only clock up the specific path? Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Or yeah, at least as far as that I know of. <laughs> I, I I'm not sure. Yeah, I haven't looked into like I looked into it like what we can use from there, but since I don't have access to the system bus they have, which, yeah, I tried to find actually a system bus from any vendor ever, and I wasn't able to find one, so, yeah. Any other question? Or suggestions? So you use the power save uh, governor? Yeah, right. yeah. This, that, won't that make, you won't, Run your bus at the optimal uh, frequency sometimes? Okay, so this talk is not uh, taking into consideration the performance bits, right? I'm only considering power consumption. We, With this specific SOC, we had quite a few problems with, with power consumption. Uh, CPU thread was not, is not like working. If you remember, it had like a talk. <coughs> a couple of years ago, how we can 
circumvent that, but I wasn't able to do that either because I think um, uh, somebody from upstream said, hey, if it's that broken, just <laughs> don't do anything about it. Uh, yeah, uh, basically, so uh, what, what I'm trying to do is to bring the power consumption as low as possible. Yeah, and if if you're not using a specific path, basically, if your drive device is not using that specific path to the target, then if you can disable all the clocks, that's the best. Right. This is something that people don't really take into consideration when they're writing drivers that use clocks. They're saying, hey, I don't care if the clock is enabled. Yeah, but when you're measuring the power consumption, that's going to count in, right? So you should always aim for the lowest rate ever, and yeah. Um, Someone uh, using some other governor for the... I think at this point it, it's, again, the solution, if, if you're trying to put this together in upstream, it's not even compiling, but if you're trying to, it's not gonna, it's gonna blow. But um, at this point... Because you have it in the, <coughs> in the C file, right? Yeah. So do you know any other upstream users who have a dif different governor? Uh, no, uh, but I think everyone is using POST. Okay. So you're, you're trying to, so these are devices usually that run on battery. Yeah. Um, it it counts. Like, power. If you want performance, that's fine. You can ask <coughs> the highest rate and it will always give you that. But if you're running with the performance one, it will always try to get the highest rate, right? If you're running with user space, you will have to tell from user space to switch to a specific rate. So you want this to be dynamic. You want this to always go to the lowest one. <coughs> so am I answering your question? I don't so even if you're specifying the highest clock, you're still using the power server because you only want the floor. Yeah, so yeah, the yeah. So you're 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 then going like ah this clock this clock this clock this clock yeah it is yeah yeah I remember I remember seeing in some Ethernet drive that I actually had uh, calls into the uh, interconnect framework to okay. request different bandwidths uh, okay bandwidths. but then you know that this specific path has a minimum limit so I don't really understand the point of the governors really. Because if each one is So they will always be, if there is no way, or, or at least the DevRec doesn't have a way to take out the governor. It always takes it. So you're, you're, you're asking for a rate, then that goes into the governor. The governor says, okay, this is the rate that you're supposed to be using based on some facts. For example, the user space takes into account whatever the specifying CCFS performance takes into account the highest rate. Stuff like that. Um, so there is no way to go around them. But that's fine. I mean, you want the government there because it takes care of always going to the lowest rate. Right? Yeah, so there is a point of having the government. And potentially in the future, it could be handling thermal and power usage and then the network to switch as well. Yeah. Okay. And again, uh, okay, th this might be. So if you haven't enabled the interconnect for your driver, for your consumer driver, it will always try to go to the lowest. So you obviously you will have a problem there. Do you, you always, if you have multiple devices on the same bus, you always want the lowest, uh, right? Is there? No, no. So if the if the GPU needs to needs the whole bus to run at eight hundred, now keep in mind like that then it's got, like if for Ethernet, if you put gigabit, then it will request uh, a higher. Yeah. From the interconnect. Yeah, but that's so that's going to be the Ethernet is going to be the lowest number it wants. It's going to be higher than some other device. On the yeah. Side. Yeah. So yeah. But there's not. There's not. So you yeah, have basically you want the yeah, you want the highest. So not, I, I, unfortunately, so I don't have remote access. Yeah. So I don't have remote access <laughs> with my board. But I was so I had one test that was actually uh, running. Uh, the uh, root FS from NFS. So that always keeps the clocks to the highest rate, right? Unless you have like the runtime resume or runtime suspend working really well. 
the air traffic driver is not doing that very well. <coughs> but uh, on suspend, not run time, but uh, system suspend, basically, you can actually have uh, interconnect disabling the pad again. So, yeah. I don't know if it's this, the, the right uh, <laughs> yeah, we, we can talk about it. Yeah. Okay, cool. Yeah. I think we need to move on. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But so thanks. Thank you.